Word on the street. Fish man show. What's the word on the street? Like who got the beast that be killing the game? Who's up on the scale? Who playing who was the score on the sheet? Fiso the prince got him taking the seat. Got the legends giving us the 411. Fiso must from the OD1. No hating sports and entertainment when we got it all and we're the only ones. And after all that action, I'm a hubby dripping high fashion. Drippy drippy on some rich and nissy, but it's stylish and soak up with passion. If it's giving us less, then we never settle. Make sure you pull up and bring all your medals. Sit back and relax, let's go. It's Fist Mask bringing you the Fist Mask show. It's the Fist Mask show. It's the Fist Mask show. It's the Fist, it's the Fist Mask show. It's the Fist Mask show. Fist Mask show. Fist Mask show. Fist show. Fist show. Fist show. What up, y'all? JP Dumania, and you're listening to my main man on the Fist Mask Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fist Mask Show. I'm looking forward to this month because I tell you what, it's high performance month. I've got some top athletes, local, abroad, some stars, some future stars. It's a nice little sprinkling of dust. So I'm really looking forward to chatting to all of them. I'm not going to reveal who they are just yet. I'm going to reveal, of course, today's guest, who's the, the first episode of the high performance month. But Hey, the other ones, I think I'm going to keep them in my pockets. I'm going to keep it as a secret. You must make sure that you're tuning into the show. But yeah, let's get started. Uh, her name is Charlene Boshoff. She's a, a superstar in the making, player of the tournament at the Belgatex Elite Challenge in Durban, and a, a star who's playing, of course, at the American University in Washington, D.C. So I guess that's one of the main reasons why I've roped her into the show. I've always wondered, you know, how is hockey played in America? Is it big? Is it small? What sort of programs do they have out there? We're going to find out all about, all about that on today's episode. So yeah, Charlene, how are you? Very good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. I'm looking forward to having a chat with you, of course. Um, Belgatex, it just happened. Play of the tournament, big girl stuff. I mean, tell me all about it. I mean, I was there, but tell me, tell me about it. <laughs> Oh man, no, it was such an experience. Um, it's now my second Bulgar Tech that I've played in with Riverside and must say the second round uh, was much better than the first round. We really just came together as a team, had such a jaw on and off the field together. Um, really enjoyed it a lot. You speak of the fact that it was your your, your second round. I mean, what happened in the first round? Did you get your, your, your did you get the <laughs> wallop? <laughs> Honestly, it was just, uh, we were a completely different team back then than we were now as well. A lot of players have come and gone since then. Um, it was also my first year at Riverside that year, so I was still trying to find my feet in the club. I didn't know where I stood and still trying to like understand how South African hockey worked again from being in the US. So no, this time around was much better. I mean, we really have such a good bond off the field, like I said, which makes on the field a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I've always seen with team sports is you know, once you kind of have that bond, you can have all the players you want in the world. You know, if you don't have that bond on and off the field, um, it can make such a massive difference. You know, uh, obviously, I speak from from our side as well as as blue hockey. You know, having won the tournament on, on, in the men's section, we just we, we we chill together every weekend. You know, we we it's not just hockey. In off season, we're still seeing each other. It's not it doesn't end at hockey. So it it goes a long way, and and no doubts. You know, throughout your career, um, you know, the same has applied. I definitely, I agree. I mean, I've noticed that especially in the US where I spend so much time with my team, I live with my teammates, we see each other for three hours every single day and we're training there. And obviously it's easy to get sick of each other, but it's just, you can tell the difference between the bond that we have off the field and what a difference it makes on the field when we just, we can trust each other. We know what everyone's capable of. Um, we know how to pull each other up. We know how to communicate to each other when people are feeling different emotions. So it's definitely helpful. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And what a tournament it was, um, you know, my hometown, it's, it was also my second time playing. Um, and, you know, the one thing that was really special is, 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 is how people come out and support hockey in Durban, you know, um, great crowds, um, great vibe. Uh, I'm not going to reveal too much of what happened after games because I think we had a bit too much fun. <laughs> but that's part and parcel of sports, isn't it? You know, just to be able to, you know, enjoy each other's company, uh, celebrate victories, and, and reflect in moments where perhaps you haven't you haven't done well. Definitely. I mean, South African's culture is unmatched. Um, being in the US, I've seen the difference in American versus South African culture. Our culture is unmatched. We know how to have a good time. We know how to support each other. And it's just, I love everyone showing up to the game, especially in Durban, Riverside with the facilities and everyone's just able to enjoy themselves and watch us. And it's amazing. 
Okay, so tell me, tell me, you know, I want us to have a bit of fun. Tell me about, you know, how did this American situation come about? You know, because I mean, hey, David Girl, you know, how do you, you know, end up in Washington, D.C., you know? Um, interesting story. So my dad has always been very fond of the U.S. and he's always kind of spoken it up to me since I was little because he's been to America and America, everything's all big and great and, you know. And I'd never been myself. And I'd always wondered like what it'd be like to go to university because you see all these movies and uh, everything in my life was based off the movies. And so when I was, I think, 16, I decided I'm going to try and see, because that's when I started also on Instagram. I started following a lot of hockey accounts and I saw, oh, these universities in America actually do play hockey and they do seem pretty decent and everything. So then I started looking into it a lot more when I was 16 and I got into an agency that really helped me um, connect with the coaches that were willing to connect with me and then try and figure out which school was the best match for me and everything. And yeah, I mean, from grade 10, I worked really hard. My mom videoed every single one of my games. I had to edit the clips and make a whole lot of videos of everything. Um, and yeah, that went from there. And then I only committed actually in my October of my matric year. And then I went over in January. So it was a little bit rushed towards the end, but I mean, two years in the making and I got there. Jeez, it sounds like the game. You video all your games, you know. Normally we're just looking <laughs> for the for the gram, you know, but clearly, you know, you had a purpose here to, 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 your, to your madness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a very different process. They obviously don't know any of the awards. I can say I made this on that team and they have no idea what that means. So they kind of need the video evidence <laughs> that I'm able to do something. Um, yeah, but a lot of interviews, a lot of Zoom calls and everything back um, when I was in high school and yeah, eventually worked out. Uh, tell me, I mean, high school, you know, what? And I know South Africans are always fascinated with what schools people went to and whatnot. So maybe we should just dive into that and, and, and get a bit of background from you. Um, so I was at St. John's in Marisburg, a Marisburg girl. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Marisburg. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I know. Probably you shouldn't say that loudly. No, shit. I love, I love my town. I love uh, my school. I really I'm do. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I was a St. John's girl all the way from grade one to matric. I loved it. Would not change it for the world. I had the best teachers, the best coaches. Um, Binks Robinson, actually, she was my high school coach. I'm still mates with her now. She was busy umpiring our games at Bulgar Techs. So really, St. John's just really made me prepared for the world. And I loved it. Would not change it for the world. <laughs> uh, the irony is that, you know, I spent my last few years at varsity in Marisburg. So um, <laughs> enjoyed my time. Enjoyed my time there. So uh, I can't come too hard at you. But it's fine. You know, <laughs> we, we won't let that mistake uh, um, affect our friendship there. All right. <laughs> but I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, great memories, no doubt, of high school. Um, you know, but, you know, one of the main reasons why obviously I brought you on here was, was to just dive into, I guess, the, the, the high performance aspect of, of being an American athlete or an American student athlete, you know, um, I know it's, it's quite different out there, you know, with NCAA rules, with, you know, how people operate. Um, you know, so I guess that's where that's where we can start. You know, how has the experience been from a from a from a from a student athlete point of view? Um, is there a major emphasis on on the student part? Is there a major emphasis on athlete part? And how do you balance all of that out? Um, so they do put a lot of emphasis on the student part. They always say we are student athletes, not athlete students. So the student always comes first. Um, because I mean that's but what you we know. Did, but you did. know, sometimes they say that. Sometimes they say that, <laughs> but you know, sometimes it's like we're saying this officially, but on the other side, it's like, yeah, but they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. I mean, um, my coach is very much, you need to be on your grades. Your grades are not up to scratch. So we have a very, I don't completely know how the GPAs work, but it's like a 4.0 scale. You need to get a 3.5 in order to like get out of study hall, everything. So he's very much, wait, 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 you need wait, to. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, you're talking American now. You're talking American now. <laughs> You know, so uh, um, GPA, you know, I always hear that in movies and whatnot. <laughs> what is that? Grade point average? What, what, how is four the past? You know what? I don't completely understand it, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it's, <laughs> I, I just go you. with it. They tell me I'm doing well. I say, great. Thank you very much. I can play hockey now. Okay, um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's basically just your average. I mean, like they don't work on percentages. They work on like point four point oh I'm not really sure why I mean percentages make a lot more sense to me but anyway so you need to get over like a certain grade point average in order to play and everything um our coach is very strict but it's also we have all the resources there we have like um a person who helps us with our schedule so that we can work around um training and games 
and doing our academics. Um, if we have a game and we have to miss a test, then they'll help us out. They'll email the teachers to us, the professors to us, and we'll figure everything out. Um, Zoom classes are very helpful. So we have to watch Zoom classes on the bus if we are not able to be in class. Um, but they definitely put a lot of emphasis on the academic part of it, especially my university is like the top 25 business school or something like that in the US. So they're very much, you know, we need to get on it and make sure that our academics are up to scratch. Um, but basically, so my day-to-day -day life is really much, I wake up at six o'clock in the morning. We have to be in the locker room at half past six every morning. Training starts at seven. <laughs> And then we train until 10 o'clock. So then it's two hours of hockey. And then the last hour is either weightlifting or running. Um, 10 o'clock is back in the locker room shower. And then our first class will start at 20 past 11. And we just go from there. Yo. <laughs> I just heard the seven. It's what, 6 to 30? Yeah. Yo. Every day. Yeah. Oh, yo. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, are you a morning person? You know, are there people who, that aren't morning people and struggle with it? Definitely, I must say. I mean, when we all get to the locker, and that's why we actually get there a half an hour before we're supposed to be at practice. It's just so that everyone can actually wake up and get going because we want to have the mentality that when you get to practice, you're awake and you're ready to go. You're not still waking up for the first half hour of practice. But no, definitely there are some mornings where we don't want to and we wonder if it's just time to call in sick. But I mean, if you call in sick, we have to go and see our trainer later on in the day and she'll do an analysis of you. So it doesn't often work if you want to call in sick. <laughs> no, fair enough. And I mean, you I just think about that. I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, when, when, you, when you love what you're doing and you love your sport, you, you will make that commitment. Yo, but I just remember when I used to have seven o'clock classes at Basati, I... I <laughs> But I actually I got to a point where I just took them off the schedule. Like they didn't exist, you know. <laughs> um, so I can just imagine how I only really function after nine. So, you know, it's super hard, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, I, mean, I agree with you, yeah. But I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing to hear how that sort of a program does work. I mean, to, to, to that sort of a dedication. Um, uh, but no doubt, I mean, if, if you are on a scholarship, I'm not sure if you're on a scholarship, but if you're on a scholarship, those are sort of sacrifices you have to make. Um, and, I, and I know we're seeing a lot more South African uh, student athletes heading over to, to America, whether it's football players, whether it's or soccer players, as they call it in America, um, or whether it's, you know, field hockey players. Um, so it's, it, it is a trend that seems to be growing and, and, and for the better, I think. No, definitely. I mean, the opportunities there are just immaculate. There's so much professionalism. They have a lot of money that they put into their sports I mean, we get new gear, new gear every year. If my shoe breaks halfway through the season, they'll get me a new pair of shoes right away. Um, we have three coaches that specialize in different areas. Um, so two assistants, one head coach. Then, like I said earlier, we have a trainer who's there for us if we ever injured or need rehab for any sort of niggles that we have somewhere. Um, like all the, we have a locker room, like state-of-the-art facilities. The field is just immaculate. It's really, the opportunities are amazing there. We really just treat it like professional athletes, which I don't think, I mean, it's amazing. I wouldn't change it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and the beautiful thing is that, I mean, with those sort of opportunities coming, you know, um, you know, for four young athletes, uh, it just, one of the big things, and it's something I've always been big on, is, is, is at times getting out your comfort zone. You know, a lot of times we, we want to be in familiar surroundings. We want to, you know, we want to just have family close by. We want to make sure that we have that, that cushion to fall back on, you know, when, when times get tough, whether from a mental perspective um, or, or from just, you know, a life perspective. Um, you know, so it's, it's always a big leap of faith to, to head over there and, and, and to try something different. And, and how massive has that been for you from a mental perspective? Um, I must say the first six months to a year were the toughest. It was definitely, I mean, when I got there, I got there in January in the middle of winter. I mean, suddenly now I'm being put in the snow and negative eight degrees Celsius is the high of the day. And it was just a complete culture shock as well, because they're very different people to South Africans. I mean, I think South Africans are warm and welcoming and Americans, it takes a while for you to get into their culture and for you, them to understand actually even what you're saying, because the accents are so different, our lingo is so different. And then it's like, no one understands what you're saying. You're just so lost and confused. And um, so it's definitely a challenge, but I mean, once you get into it, once you make the right friend groups and you realize where you fit in, it really is just so worthwhile. Um, my coach, though, he definitely helped a lot. So he's very international. He's American, but he went and he was in Europe for a year and then in this place for a year. He's been everywhere. He travels a lot. So he's very 
um, culturally aware of all the differences that are going on in our team. And we also have a lot of different internationals in the team as well. Um, but he was very helpful in my first year. He knew exactly like what my culture was like. So he tried to help me and understand how the American culture was different and explain these differences to me. And yeah, I mean, I really had such a good support system there as well. And obviously my family was supporting me from afar. I used to phone my mom at midnight sometimes just because I wanted to talk to her. And I mean, obviously she doesn't mind, but I mean, it's, it's so worthwhile in the end of it. It's rough, but once you get past the horrible stages, you go up and it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you've you mentioned something great there I mean, with regards to team culture and, and, and differences. I mean, we live in South Africa where, you know, it's a, it's a melting pot of, of different cultures. And, and at times, you know, you've had some teams, you know, having that ethos of this is the way we do it as a team, you know. Um, and at times, you know, that thing clashes with another person's culture or another person's beliefs. It's so important, isn't it, you know, to embrace different cultures, different people and make sure that we, as a group, everyone kind of feels comfortable with that, within that environment. Definitely, I agree with you. I mean, that's something we've learned a lot in South Africa. Like you said, we have all these different cultures coming together and playing for the one team. Um, so in the US, obviously, just a bit different. We have different nationalities coming. So we have Dutch girls, Argentinian girls, English girls, South African girls, um, and then the Americans, obviously. And then each American is even different because each state is pretty much a different culture on its own. Um, but our coach really just, he implements a culture in our team which includes everyone and respects everyone's different backgrounds. Um, so it's never like my, any one culture is favorite and we're only going to follow the American culture. He kind of tries to make it so that everyone feels included. And we do a lot of team bonding, which helps a lot with that. Um, so we have like a few days before preseason where we just get together and we just get to know everyone. We make sure everyone's on the same page about what our goals are for the season. Um, so now our coach definitely helps implement a good culture in our team. Look, you, you've got a bit of an American twang there. It's, it's just, no! I'm, I'm glad every now and then, eh? <laughs> I, could, oh. I could just imagine when you got there, you're like, I was just brilliant. It's like, hey, brew what? No one knows what brew is yet. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I promise you. My accent changes every single time. It's ridiculous. Because I go there and I realize when I speak to them, my accent changes because otherwise they don't <laughs> understand me. <laughs> So I would say, I wouldn't say y'all there, I say yeah, which is annoying. I, as a South African, I'd never say that in South Africa. But I mean, if you say y'all, they kind of look at you. You gotta adapt to die, eh? Come on, bro. You have to adapt, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I feel you, I feel you. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I mean, we've spoken about, um, you know, the, the sort of programs you have there. Um, you know, another really interesting aspect of, 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 of I guess, what we call the switch and moving across to America, um, the hockey itself on the field, the style, you know, um, take me through that. Take me through how difficult it was. I mean, we've spoken about adapting from an off the field perspective on the field, you know, have you felt that you've had that growth? Um, have you been pushed to, 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 to get to a different level? Do you feel that from a player who left St. John's to where you are now at, at American University, you've had that growth and, and, and what has contributed to that growth? 100% I've grown so much as a player um, I mean especially I got there in January which was our off season so we just training for four months straight in off season no games and I definitely needed that just to adapt to their hockey and because their hockey is a lot more intense I feel like like it's a lot more go 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 for it it's not like hold back and it's I don't know the way I described it when I first got there to my mom is it felt like I was playing the free state all the time because it's just go 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 for it all the time high pressure high pressure um, it's a lot like it's a just, I don't know, it's a different type of game, but when you get there, you start to adapt to it. But my hockey has 100% grown a lot. Um, our coach puts a lot of emphasis on, you do individuals with him, so it's like one-on-one -on -one sessions. And he likes each person to have one um, a week at least and just to work on different skills. So what I did a lot there was defensive things because my apparently my defense was enough to scratch or up to a standard. So I did a lot of defense work with him and now here I am now playing as in Jack and it really helped a lot. Um, but definitely my hockey has grown 100%. I think I'm a completely different player to when I left, and I think it's definitely that emphasis on the... Um, it's because of that one-on-one -on -one hockey that I had a lot with my coach that first year I was there. And, yeah, I mean, I was also surrounded by great players. I got in there as a freshman, and the whole team was basically made up of seniors, so they definitely helped and guide me. And um, there was one other South Africa there, thank goodness, so she could kind of explain things to me on how things were supposed to be done, and, yeah. Yeah, well, fascinating, you know, with regards to a lot of the stuff that that, that you ladies do over there. I mean, whew, you know, I know at varsity, you know, you always have that, that energy and that drive to, to want to get better. 
especially when you're young and you're not old like us, you know, you have that energy, you know, and drive to get better, you know. And, you know, for you to come back, um, second tournament, to win player of the tournament at the Belga Tech's a big challenge. Um, as a South African, that would have been a major thing for you, no doubt. Um, but I guess it's also on the back of all the hard work you've put in. And that's where you, you have that reward and you have that sense of pride that, hey, man, like, I've, I've, I've left, I've come back and, I, and I'm a hell of a different player. No, definitely. I mean, even in high school, I really just worked hard on my hockey. I used to wake up at like half past four every single morning to get to the Astro before school started so that I could play hockey for at least an hour and then go shower quickly at school and then get to classes. Um, so no, I've definitely put in the hard yards from grade eight, I think that was, but then definitely at varsity, my hockey just took a whole big jump. I was suddenly like put in the big leagues and told I need to play this and do this and do that and get this skill sharpened and this can't happen. And I mean, one thing I've noticed is my composure on the ball has really just been phenomenal. I used to panic in high school when I got the ball sometimes and I'd just toss it away stupidly. But I mean, now I think I'm a lot more composed than I am, ugh, than I was, um, definitely the coaches just put on a lot of one-on-one -on -one emphasis and they really like they know you as a player and they know what they can do to make you the best player you can be from a mental point of view you know a lot of times you know it, it's it's call, we call it the the, the the perfect performance state you know a lot of times it, it takes it takes a long time to to get to that specific place where you kind of feel like i belong number one and number two I, this is my thing, you know, I just, this is what I do, you know, I don't have an, you know, and I, that's probably where that composure comes from. It's probably getting to a place where mentally you just feel like you belong at the highest level, you belong, you know, on that hockey field. Um, and it just allows you to relax a little bit more. I don't know if you share the same sentiment. No, definitely. I agree with you. I mean, definitely the feeling of belonging comes with the composure of it. Um, so it took me a while to get into that in the U.S., but then, so I was always playing right back and the sense back girl, she was an English girl. She really helped me a lot with my composure because she was constantly telling me, I need to back myself. She can keep telling me all the words she wants and saying, I'm building me up. But as soon as I start backing myself, then my composure will come. Then I'll start making the great passes and then I'll start actually playing hockey that I can play. Um, so definitely from mental, I've lost my train of thought now, sorry. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, definitely my composure came from just feeling comfortable on the team, starting to back myself and starting to realize I'm actually more than capable. There's a reason I'm here. There's a reason I'm playing hockey at this level. Um, I've worked so hard so I, I can do what I do what I know how to do. I've also always found, you know, once we, once we get past, uh, as athletes, once we get past the stage of not wanting to make mistakes, it always also makes life a lot easier, um, you know, because straight away you, you're not... You don't, you, you're not thinking in a negative way to say, oh, don't mess up or whatever. It's just, you just play your game, you know, and, and, and there's an understanding that mistakes will be there, turnovers will be there, you know, um, you know, daft overheads will be there, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of the game. Um, yes, you'll set, set those high standards, but at the same time, um, it's, it's not something that, that, that will hinder you going forward, you know, because the next time you need to make that, that, that long 45-yard pass or whatever, you need to be able to still be able to execute. Yeah, no, exactly. But I mean, one thing that I learned from mistakes is my coach sat us down one day and he played a video. And at one of the international games, it was like, sorry, I don't know if you can hear the noises that are going on. Um, it was one of the international games. It was like Netherlands versus Germany or something like that. And he pointed out a player and she just made a mistake and gave it away, gave the ball away or something. It was a media turnover. But what she did is she just got right back into the game and he said to us, mistakes are inevitable. Here's the Dutch girl who is the best in the world playing for the best team in the world. And she made a mistake, but she just got back into the game. So that's one thing that really changed my mentality on the field is I'm going to make a mistake. It's inevitable. I'm not going to have a perfect game. I'm going to give away the ball. I'm going to make a bad tackle. I might get a card here and there. I'm going to give away a corner. But if I give away a corner, I get back in the goal and I go and defend the corner. Like there's nothing I can do. It happened. Umpires saw it, you know, <laughs> get on, keep playing the game. Yeah, truly really fascinating, you know, to, to get your thoughts with regards to all of that. Um, and going forward, will we see Charlene Goshoff in the green and gold of South Africa, and when? You no, know, that has always been a dream of mine. Um, I definitely would love to. I would love to play IPT this year, but unfortunately my commitment is in the US. So next year, I'm really hoping to be able to play at IPT and potentially get the opportunity to wear the green and gold. It's always been a dream and I'd really love to do it. So working for it, um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get there very soon. <laughs> the, one, the one good thing is that, you know, potentially because, you know, um, the Belgatex tournament was on Supersport. It was on Supersport Schools. 
I gotta give my guys a punt. So you know, um, <laughs> you know, maybe someone was watching. You know, maybe it was someone was observing and saying, "Hey, she's got something." And and that's the benefit uh, of also having you know games televised and and the the new digital world that that makes you know sport uh, available online. Um, but yeah, maybe someone was watching. Who knows? Eh? Oh, you know, it would be great. I'd love it. Um, but no, definitely. I mean, I think the streaming helped a lot with exposure. And that's what I said to my parents. I was so excited for this tournament is just because it's exposure to South African hockey. And now it's my second tournament. It's being live streamed. So it's even more exposure to kind of integrate myself back into the system here. Yeah, going to be fascinating. I mean, I'm going to ask a stupid question, you know. Are you looking to play for the Raiders? Are you looking to play for Southern Gauteng? Is there any specific side that you that you would like to play for? <laughs> Or, or are you going to stick to home? It might be Raiders. Um, I mean, that's where I play club, obviously, in Durban. So it'd probably be Raiders. I'm not so sure Southern Gauteng. I don't have a place there. But I mean, yeah, Raiders is looking a lot more likely than anyone else. <laughs> Come on, you got to push yourself. Get out your comfort zone. <laughs> we spoke about this thing. <laughs> no, I've done a lot of out of the comfort zone, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You, you're just completely shutting that down. You're like, no, don't even try it. Don't even try it. No, <laughs> hey, you know, anything's possible. We'll we'll see what happens. I'll see where life takes me. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Charlene, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for being the first guest on our Hub Performance series. Um, and yeah, you know, wishing you all the best going forward. Um, I tell the guys one thing at training on Tuesday. I said, don't call me by my name. Call me champ because I'm a champion. So I'm gonna call you champ. And I want to say goodbye and stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you. I like that mentality. You know how it is. All the best uh, at the American <laughs> University. I suppose they have to call it the American University because you're at the capital, you know, Washington, D.C. Uh, have you been to the White House? Oh, well, past it. Never been in it. I'd love to go in it, but I don't Come know on. how that's possible. <laughs> oh, you can't do tours and stuff. <laughs> it was apparently as a South African, I need to go through my embassy and then it's a three month waiting list because we need to, it just Never sounds mind. like a mission. So I'll, I'll stand mind. on the outside. I'll I, I understand. Just stand outside, <laughs> send us pictures, you know, make sure the IG is looking clean <laughs> and you know, keep doing your thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. All good. Fun. Enjoy the rest of your week and uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Yeah, it's been fascinating. What a journey. Um, great to hear from Charlene. Yeah, thank you for everyone who tuned, who's tuned into the, the Fist Mass show. Um, this is just part one of what should be a really exciting four-part series with regards to um, high-performance athletes, you know, uh, and, and, and that particular episode was, was, was special because, you know, I've seen on Ongi Mali, the South African women's hockey player, she's headed overseas, um, and there's been a numerous South Africans who have gone to, the, to America, have played a bit of hockey out there, um, and have tested themselves, and it's good to see South Africans doing that. Um, a lot of times, you know, like I said in the show, we we tend to want to do what's safe. We you know, want to we want to never want to test the boundaries. Um, so take my hat off to all of the South Africans who are who are pushing themselves. And yeah, you know, as I always say, excellence is a lifestyle. So mentality, you know, to be the best you can be, extremely important. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you are following the show. Make sure that you're subscribing on our YouTube channel. And if you are a Supersport customer, make sure that you check out Supersport Podcasts. You can also watch us or listen in on the show on Supersport Podcasts. Um, I'm sure all of you have been seeing the advertisements and, and the cool ad that we have on Supersport. Um, so shout out to them. Shout out to the digital team um, for putting that together. And yeah, cheers to growth. Cheers to love. Cheers to success. Cheers to all of you. Fist Mess Show. Signing out.